All right, this is going to be our scene on acne treatments, okay? So let's just start with a brief introduction on what acne is. So acne vulgaris is a common skin disorder that occurs in about 85% of individuals between the ages of 12 and 24, coinciding with puberty and androgen production. So it begins with excessive proliferation and adhesion of skin cells that form a keratin plug and that closes up the hair follicle. And within this closed hair follicle, skin cells are shed and sebum production continues. And this causes the follicle to dilate and form a comedone. The sebum that's produced serves as a nutrient for the proliferation of P acnes, which along with other factors triggers an inflammatory response that causes the formation of a pustule or papule, the pimple. And if this progresses, the follicular wall can rupture leading to the formation of an inflamed nodule. All right, so in terms of medications, there are different ones that can be used alone or in combination to affect one or more of these pathological components to clear the acne lesions. Okay, so let's talk about it. So in this room, we see various things, and let's talk about what each one of these things are. Let's start over here. So here we have the ant with a tie, ant with a tie for antibiotics. And the reason why he's squashing the fires to help us remember that the antibiotics not only work by acting as antibiotics, as against the bacteria, but they also squash the fire. They squash the inflammation. What are these antibiotics? Well. I don't have a great mnemonic in this picture for it, but we have the CEDM on his body. His name is Kedem. And this helps remember very common antibiotics used in the treatment of acne. CE is going to be for clindamycin and erythromycin, which are topical antibiotics. And DM for doxycycline and minocycline are very common antibiotics, which are oral. Topical forms tend to be well tolerated, while the oral antibiotics tend to have adverse effects. For example, the oral tetracyclines have GI disturbances and photosensitivity as adverse effects, while the macrolides just have GI disturbances. Okay, so that's it for the antibiotics. Let's move on to the next category of acne medication. So in the middle of the room over here, we have this retina. There's this eye, this retina. There's this eye over here. And out of the retina, there's making noise. There's a lot of noise coming out of the retina. Ret Retina noise for retinoids. Retinoids are vitamin A derivatives that interact with the retinoid receptors to regulate gene expression in a manner that normalizes keratinocyte differentiation, and this reduces hyperproliferation. Retinoids also reduce sebum production and inflammation, and this is why retinoids are useful for acne as well as for a variety of other conditions including psoriasis and severe rosacea. What are these retinoids? So here we have one train, a regular train and an ice train. The train for tretinoin and the ice train for isotretinoin. The reason why the ice train over here has a cyst on it to help us, is to help us remember that isotretinoin is used for acne that has cysts and nodules. If you ever think of acne with cysts and nodules, think of isotretinoin. What's going on in the back of the scene? So here we have Tarzan. Tarzan for tazarotene. And he's staring at this apple trampoline. Apple trampoline for adapalene. Tazarotene and adapalene are other types of retinoids and they are used in the treatment of mild and moderate forms of acne. Then we come to this guy. It's a dad and his son. Dad and son. Dad and son for Dapsone. Dapsone is a cell phone that exhibits both anti-inflammatory and antibacterial activity and is effective at reducing inflammatory acne lesion counts. So this anti-inflammatory activity derives partly from its ability to interfere with neutrophilic function and to reduce the production of TNF-alpha by mononuclear cells. It inhibits with folate synthesis, and for that we have this foliage on the floor that he's stepping on to help us remember that it interferes with folate synthesis. Then we come to this cute bacteria over here. Cute bacteria for cutie bacteria acnes. P acnes. P acnes is also known as cutie bacteria acnes. So the cute bacteria is for cutie bacterium acnes. And this is sort of what it looks like if you look at a gram stain. Anyway, cutie bacterium acnes over here, or P acnes, is being squashed by this AZ lake. It's a lake that has an AZ in it. AZ lake for azelaic acid. Azelaic acid is a naturally occurring dicarboxylic acid that has antibacterial activity against P acnes through its ability to inhibit protein synthesis. It also exhibits anti-inflammatory activity and inhibits the division and differentiation of keratinocytes. So that's the AZ lake for azelaic acid. Why is there this pair of ox up here? There's a pair of ox that's they're bent over. Bent pair of ox for benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide is also used as a topical medication that improves acne primarily through bactericidal action against P. acnes. It also reduces inflammation and has comedolytic activity. Here we have this salad cycling on this bike on top of the screen. The salad cycling. Salad cycling for salicylic acid. Topical salicylic acid penetrates the pilosebaceous unit and works as an exfoliant to clear comedones. And that's why this cycle is squashing the comedone, the comb. <clears throat> and it's squashing a carrot to help remember the keratolytic effects that it has at higher concentrations. To help us remember that dryness is a major side effect, we'll have this cactus here. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the scene. Of course, there's a lot, a lot more to discuss, but we try to make these videos brief, and we try to focus on the high-yield stuff. But I hope you enjoyed. Take care.